What's up guys, this is Corey with Mission Side Hustle and today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how to get started with Uber Eats and how to do it with a scooter. Now, the main content of my channel normally is me growing $500 to $1 million, but I did in fact get my start with this scooter right here on Uber Eats. And I'm gonna to tell you guys a little bit of information, the reasons why I think a scooter is the best vehicle hands down for delivery, and my five steps to ensure you're gonna have a successful and profitable start. Stay tuned, you won't wanna miss it. Before I get started, I gotta sell you on this real quick. I gotta to explain to you why a scooter is the best thing to do. So check it out. First things first, they are low cost. They don't cost a lot of money to buy. You can buy them new often for seven, $800. Again, I bought this one used for 500 bucks. Gas is little to none. I'll spend three, four, maybe $5 uh, driving this thing. I can do a couple shifts and it doesn't cost me a lot of money at all. There's very, very little maintenance. The insurance policy, this is like $70 a year, so it's little to nothing. And there's almost no depreciation because they're not worth a whole lot. Now, depending on where you guys live, this, this one is huge. Parking is so easy, you can park uh, on little sections of, of a parking spot, you can park on sidewalks. You're really in and out of places very often, so parking with this is so much easier. If you're in a high population area or like a downtown area, I will truly wouldn't even want to do Uber Eats with a car. This is the way to go in terms of parking. Another thing to think about is traffic. It's, it's much less of a factor when you're in the scooter. Um, where I'm at, I can kind of get backed up sometimes, but I can very easily just kind of go around everything. Now Uber Eats, when you're on a scooter, will give you shorter trip distances. And, and you might think that's not a good thing, but for me, I found it to be awesome. Over half of my income came from tips. So the way I was thinking of it, if I do shorter trips, I can do more trips per hour, and that gives me a much greater chance of getting tipped way more often than if I was spending larger distances or larger amounts of time delivering single orders. And the last thing that's so cool, people think that it's awesome. They really liked it, they wanted to ask me about it, people talked to me about it, they thought it was really cool. I don't know if there's any tangible benefit to that or people tip more, but people seem to like it. Maybe they felt sorry for me, I don't know, but uh, it was always a conversation piece and I thought that was really cool. All right guys, I know you're ready for it, so let's dive right in. Let's talk about how to make the most money. Step number one. Right, so the first thing you're gonna want to do is use a referral code when you sign up. There's no reason not to do it, and I'm not gonna sit here and just pitch you guys my code, although I will include it here in a minute. Um, if you have a friend that's already doing Uber Eats or you know has done in the past, ask them for their code. That way you guys can both get some sort of bonus whenever you get started. This is to your guys' benefit only. There, there really is no losing proposition for it. It's only a win-win. So like I said, ask a friend for their code. Otherwise, I'll include mine right here for you guys. My bonus when I got started in the Tampa Bay area a couple months ago was $50 after 50 deliveries. And while that's not a lot of money, um, I didn't mind it hitting my account. So like I said, it's a win-win. Make sure you guys do it. If you guys actually signed up recently and did not use the code, I'm gonna include some instructions here on how to retroactively go back and apply a code just so you don't miss out on that. Now I wanna clarify one thing on the bonus. There are two different ways that Uber Eats can do their bonus structure. They can either give you a cash bonus like I got after a certain amount of deliveries or a guarantee. Now, I'm not gonna argue which one is better because they're both great for different reasons. The cash bonus is just straight up cash after a certain amount of deliveries. The guarantee is a guaranteed amount of money you will make within a certain amount of deliveries in a certain period of time. So I've seen things like you're guaranteed to make $1,000 after 100 deliveries in certain areas, and that might not be great if you've made over $1,000, but if you're just tracking at you know, $700, $800, and you hit that 100 delivery, you're gonna get a $200 bonus, essentially. So check it out. Like I said, it's a win-win. You guys can't go wrong with it. So that's my step number one. Don't forget to do that. Step number two. All right, guys, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is have the right vehicle. Now, sounds a little basic, right? But I'm gonna, let me explain real quick. Uber allows you guys to register a car, a truck, an SUV, a scooter, it has to be 50 cc's or below, so you can't get on there with a motorcycle and be driving around with a Harley. I mean, in some markets, a bicycle too, if you're in something maybe really population dense. Now, I wanted to highlight this, because it's very important. Everyone wants to make a lot of money, right? Who doesn't? But it's not so important how much you make as to how much you get to keep in your pocket. I really wanted to highlight that, because I think people overlook the cost of, of doing this with a car versus a scooter, and that's why I think the scooter is the way to go. Think about your, if you're in a car, your cost for gas, the insurance to keep that vehicle on the road, the maintenance to fix it as you, you know, put some miles on it, and then over time as you're doing it, the depreciation of the value of that asset. With the scooter, I told you guys I bought it for $500. It cost me $5 in gas a week, and an insurance policy on this is $70 for the whole year. The maintenance is little to none, and the depreciation, if you buy it used already, there is none. What's the worst thing that can happen to the scooter? Uh, that's gonna put me out. The choice for me is pretty clear. Step number three. All right guys, so the next thing you have to do before you even think about delivery on Uber Eats is understanding the market that you're in. 
there's a few things you have to consider. First, when people are going to eat. You're gonna have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner time slot. I personally never really did breakfast, and I'll kind of explain to you guys why here in a little bit, but Uber Eats recommends certain time slots for each meal. For lunch, they say 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., and for dinner, they say 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., and I actually found that to be pretty much accurate. Sometimes you can go later or earlier, but I really found that to be the best hours. Now, I did on my scooter, I kind of skipped breakfast, and the reason was you're gonna be delivering a lot of coffees, uh, a lot of small like breakfast sandwiches and to me it just wasn't worth the time and I hated doing drinks on the scooter so I did want to kind of pass on with that uh, but more importantly man lunch and dinner is where it's at people are going to give you the biggest tips based on the amount of money their meal costs think about it it's the same thing in a restaurant if you order a bunch of food generally people are going to tip based on what that total bill is so if you're delivering for lunch you might get a whole office that you're delivering for or if you're doing dinner you might deliver for a whole family uh, which really could turn out to be an awesome tip for you. So I did skip breakfast. If it's the only time you can do it, then give it a shot. Um, but for me, I found lunch and dinner to be the best. Now, the next important thing about your market you have to consider is where you're going to be delivering. You really, really, really want to find a population dense area. And the reason is if you're in a population dense area, you're gonna get more orders in less time and you're not gonna spend as much time waiting around for orders to come through. That is the main killer that I found for me is that if I had a 15 minute gap, 20 minute gap between orders, that was time that I could have been spent delivering, and uh, it wasn't my choice, it was just maybe I was in a bad area. So don't go too far out of your way. You have to consider what your time is worth if you're driving you know, on a scooter 30 minutes to an hour to get somewhere you wanna deliver. Um, but you know, try and find that equilibrium, try and find that best thing for you. So think about the times and where you're gonna be delivering. Step number four. All right, so next guys, there's a few things that you really should consider getting. Uh, a few of them make my life a little bit easier, your job a little bit easier, and some of them I just really would even consider delivering if I didn't have them. So first things first, you guys need, I'm telling you, if you're gonna be on a scooter, you need to wear a helmet. You're also gonna want a phone mount. I have mine up here. I don't have some of the things on right now, but you're gonna want a phone mount. And the reason is that's how you get your directions. You can really kind of watch the map and see where it's going, get all your order information. So do not forget that. Make sure you guys have that. It makes your life a little bit easier. I've done it with and without, and 100 times over, I really wouldn't even want to do it if I didn't have a mount on top of my scooter here. The next thing you're gonna want is I don't have it mounted at this moment anymore, but I did have a storage tote on the back here. And what I did, there's a few ways you can do it. This one was free. I found this little crate, it's like a like a milk crate, and I just strapped it on here with some uh, ratchet straps I had at my house. But if you guys are really thinking about doing this more often or full time or anything, I would really consider there's a lot of great bags in the market that are insulated. You can wear them like a backpack. No, with, even regardless of having this, I still had a lot of trouble with um, like drinks and pizzas and stuff along those lines. So. This is helpful, but it is not the ultimate solution. So if you guys are doing this just as a side hustle, go for something like that that's free and low cost. But if you're gonna be doing this a lot more, make sure you get invest in yourself a little bit. Have one of those insulated bags, it'll help you out a lot. The next thing you're gonna want is an external phone battery. If you guys are gonna be out there for a while, your phone's gonna drain really quickly, especially if you're running the mount up here and have the, the map going at all times. So make sure you get a battery, hook it up. Uh, you just don't wanna be in the middle of a run when your phone dies. It would really make your life difficult. So. Just get one of those external phone batteries and you'll be all set to go. Now this next thing I would recommend if you're gonna go with like the free tote idea and not get the big backpack, but I would have some sort of carrying bag as well. There were many times where I had larger orders where I'd fill this up or maybe something wouldn't fit and I would just throw it in the bag and kind of put it on my shoulder and that really helped me keep my order moving along and delivering quickly. All right, and the last thing I really recommend to people is if you're gonna have this phone mount up here, uh, I always had some headphones to help me hear the directions a little bit better. Maybe I'd play uh, in one ear a little bit of music or something if I had a long drive ahead of me. So wear some headphones, it really helps you with the directions. And if the customer calls to make some sort of uh, edit to their order or anything like that, you can see you can hear the call coming in so you won't miss anything. If you're gonna think about doing this, guys, those items that I listed are really helpful. I would consider it. Um, you could probably go without for most of them, just not the helmet. Um, but I think it would make your job on Uber Eats way more enjoyable and way more profitable. So check that out. Step number five. This one here, it might come a little bit more natural to others, but you really have to consider it. You have to look and act the part while you guys are out there. I know it sounds a little ridiculous, but it really does make a difference. This, whether you like it or not, is the service industry. And when you're in the service industry, you have to be warm, inviting, and friendly to others. So make sure you guys are out there. Um, you don't have to be walking around with like a cheesy smile all the time, but just make sure that you guys have a good attitude while you're doing this. It will come through and people will notice. The next thing, you wanna present yourself in a professional way. Don't deliver in your pajamas. I'm not making that up. I've seen it multiple times, but have fun with it. You know, like you can look casual, like this is great. You can wear casual clothes. You can mix it up too. If you're doing a holiday season, um, 
try something a little bit goofy. People like to appre people appreciate it. They think it's cool. I did an episode a while ago where I actually delivered food with a Santa sweater on, and I'm not making it up. I think it really helped tips. I got a great reaction from a lot of people. So have fun while you're doing this. It, it's good for you and it's good for your tips. Make sure you're doing that. And then I want you guys, last thing, picture who you want touching or delivering your food. And now try and look that part. It's pretty simple. The customer's perception of you is their reality. You could be a great, awesome, trustworthy person, but if you show up and you're not presenting yourself in a great manner, they only know you in that three, four, five seconds you're dropping off the food, and it really could affect your tip. They want someone who looks the part, looks professional, and I know you guys can do it. So make sure you're looking great when you're out there. Hey guys, if you got any sort of value or any help from this video, please make sure you like it. Leave a comment, let me know, and share this with a friend who maybe wants to start Uber Eats as well. Don't forget guys, I'm growing $500 to a million, so check it out on my channel, it's really cool. If you guys are interested, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Thanks.